All right, guys, it's been a while since I've played any games on this channel, but computer over there is working. I got a bunch of time and I found a game that uh, I had never heard of or seen. And for those of you that have watched videos of me playing games, I like the story games, the telltale type of game, that choose your own adventure game. And I think that's what this is. So uh, we're just gonna we're just gonna play the first episode, I hope, today and uh, see what we think. Stop! You're not getting anywhere with this Von Borschert. You know, I kind of get the same feeling, my dear Sarah. Listen. Nothing. Not a sound. No one's coming to save you. Huh. That's what you think. The Golden Order knows exactly where we are. <laughs> By the time your ridiculous secret society turns up, I'll be long gone. As for you, nothing will remain of your body. If you touch a single hair on my mother's head, I'll skin you alive. You know, Louis, I have no intention of beating your dear mother. There are more persuasive ways of making you talk. You've stolen something from me that I intend to get back. Where have you hidden it? Von Borschert, you can't sell that book on the black market anymore. This is finished. We know you're planning on selling at one of Lord Mortimer's parties. All right? Just tell us who the buyer is and we can make a deal. You've no idea of the trouble you've gotten yourselves into. Oh, but you will tell me where it's hidden. I can promise you that. Oh, stop annoying our host, Louis. Son. Didn't what happened to you in Rome teach you anything? Just a few more minutes and my concoction will be ready. With this, your bodies will dissolve in less than four hours. You'll see. It loosens tongues in no time. You know, I have to admit, Mother, the only thing you've ever taught me is that damn motto of yours. Always remain rational and open. I got it. I've opened our shackles. Draw him over here. I'll take care of him. Von Borchard. Von Borchard. Hmm? Listen. Let's make a deal. I'll tell you where the book is if you let my mother go free. Oh, what are you playing at? Don't worry, Mother. You want to play the hero. Pity you're not in any position to do so. For the last time. Where is Alazif? Let me do this. Trust me. Please, be my guest, Mother. Mm. Ah. Well done, Louis. You reacted perfectly. How do you feel, Mother? Couldn't be better. He's alive, so I can question him after we get back. Pity he's just a middleman. Hmm. Means I haven't finished with this case. Oh, I had a feeling you'd be running off on one of your adventures again, Mother. You know what? I'm warning you. This time, I'm coming with you. No. Even though you impress me more and more, I have to do this on my own. Mother, you're no spring chicken anymore. Come on, let's go home. And don't forget to send our men to tend to Von Borchardt.
Well done, Mother. You just had to pick up Von Burchard's trail on your own, didn't you? You ditch me in Paris with no explanation, and off you go to infiltrate one of the world-renowned receptions of this Lord Mortimer? And now he writes me to say that you've gone missing on his private island? Which, by the way, looks more like a big rock than a paradise island. The least he could do is explain to me how he managed to lose you. In any case, it is time for you to stop all this, Mother. It no longer suits your age. Well, I'm sure I'll find you once again, slogging through the caves beneath the island, searching for some long-lost mystical object that you just can't live without. I'm already hating this trip, and all I've done is think about it. Contrary to what one may be able to imagine, it was not the host himself who invited me. Well now, Duchess, we find ourselves both invited by Sir Holm. Well, how very amusing. Perhaps we have some common interests, Your Eminence. Is this your first time at one of Lord Mortimer's legendary parties? Oh, no. We have been friends since long ago. But as I'm doing some business with Sir Holm, the invitation came from him. Well, I simply can't wait for all the festivities to begin. And you good, sir. What brings you here? Your Eminence, with all due respect, I prefer to keep my reasons for coming here to myself. I promise it has nothing to do with the legendary party that you all appear to be preparing for. I believe what you will, my son. However, everything is related to the legendary parties organized by our host. Yeah, I'll be the judge of that, Cardinal. Anyway, consider yourself fortunate, young man. Because there are many who dream of simply one day setting foot on this island. And only a very few ever make it. Indeed, I imagine this must be your first time here. That's right. Until now, I've never been invited by Lord Mortimer. You'll see. You won't soon forget it. Given what I've seen so far, I wish I'd been passed over. Come, Duchess. They are waiting for us. We're moving, Monsieur de Richet, if you would like to join us. I'm coming, Duchess. A cardinal? A duchess? I wonder if all the guests here are this prestigious. If I'd known, I, I would have gone for a better suit. Are you all right? It's done. Did you put it in a safe place? Yes. I made sure no one was following me. Don't worry, Sarah. No one's going to find it. Are you absolutely sure? Yes, I'm sure. Right. Just one thing left to do. No, Mother! No! Don't! Don't! What? Have you lost your mind? There is no other way. If you... if you kill me, you won't find it. That is the point, my dear. No one must ever put their hands on it again. No. But... I trusted you. No, sir. Don't! No! No! <gasps> you can run if you want to, Sarah. But you will pay for it. You. Uh, Louis, are you all right? What's going on? Here, take this. I'm sorry. Keep it. Are you better? I'm fine. Don't worry. It's getting late. Why don't Why don't you go on ahead and I'll catch up with you, okay? Are you sure? Yes. I'm I'm sorry. I'm sure, yes. Fine. Uh. 
and I definitely have to find Mother quickly. Am I going crazy or, or what? This can't be real. The, the Duchess arrived with me. What's happening to me, for God's sake? I absolutely need to find you, Mother. Louis, during the trip, I had something I wanted to ask you, but we didn't happen to run into each other. Yes, Duchess? I'm not sure if you remember, but we've met before. At that time, you were of two minds as to your choice of career. Tell me, what have you been up to since? I have been involved in all sorts of unsolved cases. Have you ever heard of the Abbey of Hexham? Uh, vaguely. An ingenious scam involving mass manipulation on a scale never seen before. Hmm. There was a cavern under the Abbey, wasn't there? Exactly. The wind would blow in through spouts, creating a, a terrifying howling sound. So, to stop the howling, the priests called for offerings from the peasants. And if they brought enough money, I'm guessing the priest stopped the howling. A perfect trick to fool simple souls. Admit it, Duchess. That story kept you in suspense, didn't it? Yes, it did. I'm delighted to find out that you were the young and brilliant French investigator. For someone who only remembers the case vaguely, your memories are very clear. Well, they say I have the memory of two people. But please, call me Emily. Fine, Emily. Tell me, I was actually helped on that case by my mother. You wouldn't know her by any chance. Wait, Louis. We've already met. You do remember me, don't you? Please excuse me, madam. I'm sure we've met before, but I don't remember where. Hmm. I appreciate your honesty, even if it's not very flattering for me. I imagine that with your beauty, madam, it's the first time a man hasn't remembered your face. Well, I must say, you make up for yourself rather elegantly. Please, stop torturing me. I'm completely at your mercy. Where have we met? Four years ago, in London? No. Sorry, I, I don't remember. In the office of William Pitt. Remember? No? I'm so sorry, Emily, but I really don't remember you. Let's drop it, Louis. It doesn't matter. Right, time to go to the manor. I ask her a question, she answers with another. Is she playing with me? Emily, please excuse my insisting, but you still haven't answered about my mother. Do you know her? You'll see, Louis. Everybody here knows Sarah de Richet. I don't know where we're going like this, Emily, but you're connected to my mother one way or another. And if I can believe my vision, you don't have much of a place in her heart.
Good evening, sir. May I ask your name, please? Louis Moras de Richet. Monsieur de Richet, delighted to welcome you among us, sir. You must be Sarah de Richet's son. I must tell you we are doing our utmost to find your mother as quickly as possible. What can you tell me about the disappearance of my mother? Two weeks have passed since Sir's mother went missing. All the staff here have since been busy searching every nook and cranny of the island. But Sir may rest assured we shouldn't be long in finding her. And just what have you found so far? It would seem that Sir's mother may be hiding on the island and regularly changing her location. But no one seems to know why she would find this behavior necessary. What do you mean? On several occasions, we have found leftovers of food, a few of her things, or even traces of campsites. The reason why we are searching the wharf again is because lights were spotted there last night. Where we are now? Indeed, sir. According to our information, lights were seen in the middle of the night, sir. After verification, none of the guests seemed to have left the manor last night. We think that perhaps sir's mother was here. Did anyone see anything else? Unfortunately not, sir. Only lights were seen by servants of the manor, sir. And as I was saying, sir, all the guests were asleep, and no one seems to have noticed anything at all. We seem to have found an object that would appear to belong to sir's mother. A handkerchief. The handkerchief is embroidered with the initials S.D.R. We came to the conclusion that they are the initials of sir's mother, Sarah de Richet. I have orders to give it to Lord Mortimer as soon as I see him. I know my mother. She's not the kind to go for a midnight stroll in the wharf for nothing. I've got to find out what the hell she was doing here. Where exactly did you find the handkerchief? On the landing dock, sir. The one you arrived by. Pass me the handkerchief. But, but sir, my orders were to give it to my master. Are you refusing to give me my own mother's personal belongings? Even though she was greatly looking forward to meeting your master, she's gone missing. And you seem incapable of finding her. Oh, but sir, please. And to top it all off, you refuse to give me the handkerchief that she so often let me use? Do I deserve such little consideration in your eyes? Is that what you wish me to report to your master? No, certainly not, sir. Please forgive me, sir. I have been such an idiot. Here you are. It is indeed your handkerchief, Mother. He must have come here for a specific reason. I need to know what it is. Let's think. What could she have been doing out here on this wharf? Inscription. And Nessis, mi fili quantilia produncia mundus orgatur. You don't know, my son, how little wisdom the world is governed with. I tend to agree. There's no way I'm leaving without finding out about Mother. Must be an incredible view from up there. Impossible to set foot on the island without being seen from 300 meters away. Looks like a bar from an old gate. This miserable old bar has been broken fairly recently. The edges are still clean, and the tip is blackened. Without analysis to the contrary, I put my money on cannon powder. 
This might just come in handy. A sack of seeds. It's unopened. No one seems to have used any. touched for a good long time. Let's see what's hidden inside. Look. Hmm. A letter written in an Oriental language. I haven't the slightest idea what it says. It's too badly written, I, I can't make out the address. Address is 50 Bedford Square, London. The address is in Sao Paulo, Brazil. That reminds me, it's about time the order sent some envoys there. Hmm, a letter written in an Oriental language. slightest idea what it says. barrel's been broken for quite some time. Hey, 
There's something not right about this floorboard. It's different from the rest. Somebody replaced it recently. But looks like it's fixed pretty solidly in place. It's going to be tough to rip it out of here. That does it. Let's see what's hidden inside. There's a book and also a bag. The Mysterium Cosmographicum. I know that book well. Mother used to read passages from it to me all the time. And judging from what I can see, it's the same one as hers. For crying out loud, what's happened to you, Mother? Let's look inside the bag. A little food, a few toiletries, a small key, and some kind of black powder. Some fruit, a piece of bacon, and some bread. The fruit's still firm. The bread's a bit stale. From the smell, this food's been here roughly two days. And if it's rationed, there's enough left to last two more days. Those are definitely my mother's things. I recognize her hairpins. This bag smells of her perfume. A piece of soap, some oils, and her powder puff. What does all this mean? An iron key completely rusted. You never know. It might be useful. I hope mother wasn't counting on it. The bottom of the bag is covered in black powder. Right. Just in case, I'll take it all. I'll give it back to Mother when I see her. I'm crying out loud. Why did you hide supplies in the middle of nowhere, Mother? I don't know what's going on here, but you obviously feel like you're in danger. Locked. I'll never get it open barehanded. Mother, but if it does, at least now you're armed. Just like in my vision. And none of it's telling me anything useful. Hmm, this wharf is used as storage for a lot of barrels. Aha. Uh -huh. What have we here? It's cannon powder. Hmm, the powder's wet. Not surprising, given the dampness of the dock. It's unusable now. I don't know what the person who left this barrel like this had in mind, but it's a waste. Apparently, someone on this island has gone through a whole lot of trouble to arm themselves. I really must find you, dear mother, and quickly, too. Fragment of amber.
how did Mortimer manage to build his manor at the top of a rocky outcrop? Impressive. Ah, my son. I was looking for you. What can I do for you, Your Eminence? I wanted to ask you. You are the son of Sara de Ricci, aren't you? You see, your mother and I were supposed to meet here on this very spot. I was supposed to hand her a very important envelope. But I haven't seen her. If only Mother had told me why she was coming here. Anyway, I ought to take the envelope. It might have something to do with her disappearance. Listen, if it will help, you can always give it to me. Thank you, my son. I'll bear that in mind. I'd rather deal with her directly. Don't take it personally. Would you happen to know if your mother has arrived yet? Certainly, Your Eminence. Mother got here some time ago. I was hoping to find her when I arrived, but given the hour, she must be asleep by now. Right. I shall see her tomorrow, then. By the way, Your Eminence, I wasn't aware you knew my mother. Ah, uh, if you only knew, my son. I hold your mother in the highest regard. She has rendered great service to the church, and her help is invaluable. I hope that you will follow in her footsteps. If only she had told me where she was headed. Nonetheless, our exchanges have always been discreet, and I should like them to remain as such. If your mother wishes to speak to you about us one day, I will not mind if she does so. That is very commendable. But since we work together on a daily basis, it's, it's surely just an oversight. Most certain. You said you worked together. What do you do, exactly? My mother and I belong to the same secret organization, the Golden Order, which I joined a few years ago. Mother trained me, and I assist in her research. In other words, you can trust me. <laughs> My child, you are telling a perfect stranger that you and your mother work for a secret society. It would seem that discretion is not one of your specialities, my son. You will understand that it does not encourage me to put my trust in you. Shit. All the same, it bothers me to see you in a quandary, Your Eminence. Is there any other solution? Look, if it's of any help, you can always leave your envelope with me and I'll give it to her as soon as I see her. Uh, I uh, hesitate. Up till now, we have always dealt with her in person, and that has always been successful. Do you think I should give it to you? Listen, you have nothing to fear. I will give your letter to my mother the moment I find her. The moment you find her? You mean Sarah has gone missing? Shit, I shouldn't have said that. Let's not exaggerate, Your Eminence. I have no other information at this time. It's probably nothing. Listen to me, my child. If I give you the letter, can you promise me before God that no one other than your mother will read it? So it's 
Not through a lack of goodwill, but I'd rather swear by something else. Ah, I beg your pardon? I mean, to be honest with you, and for my promise to keep all its value, I assure you, it would be better if I didn't swear before God. I shall swear upon my mother's life, if you prefer. Are you aware of the enormity of what you just said to me, young man? Uh, listen, um, it is nothing against you, but uh, I prefer to keep this envelope. I'll wait until I run into your mother. It isn't as urgent as that, really. So, let's join the others. Oh, man. If I had answered differently, I'm sure I could have got my hands on that letter. Too bad. Lord, Lord Mortimer certainly has a taste for staging rooms. I thought my chimney was big, but this one is beyond belief. It's the least one can say. I've been longing for a warm fire for ages. Since I set foot on the island, I haven't ventured more than two yards away from it. Have you also just arrived? Oh, late morning, I'd say. Louis, come join us. Monsieur, may I introduce you to Monseigneur His Eminence, Cardinal Piaggi? He joins us straight from Rome. Oh, just call me Your Eminence. It's simpler. George Washington, President of the United States of America. Delighted at last to make your acquaintance, Mr. President. Pleased to meet you, Mr. President. Louis Maurras de Richet, it is an honor to meet you. Young man, let's keep it simple, please. Let us forget our fancy titles. Nice to meet you, Louis. I should imagine you never thought you'd be in such company. I must admit that I didn't. It's the first time that I've ever met so many illustrious personalities. And you haven't seen anything yet. Generally, when Lord Mortimer organizes one of his receptions, there are over a dozen people here. They can't all be here yet. And you'll see, most of the time there's only the upper crust. And I noticed you were already getting to know his eminence at the entrance. It's the perfect place to build up a network. What were you talking about, if you forgive my indiscretion? At the risk of disappointing you, we weren't conspiring in our corner, sir. His eminence was simply telling me that he knew my mother and how much he held her in high esteem. It so happens that Monsieur de Riche's mother is to join us. Oh, pity. No scrumptious gossip or juicy tidbits, unmentionable secrets, or even money matters. But you'll see, it will come. Despite all the goodwill in the world, you can't stop people scheming left and right around oh, here. Speak for yourself, sir. <laughs> <laughs> well, my friends, do any of you know the reason why we're here this time? Not in the slightest. As for me, I've been invited by Sir Horn, a close friend of Lord Mortimer, but uh, I do not know the reason why. You see, Louis, every time Lord Mortimer organizes a reception, he always finds a moment to set up a chat with all the guests. During which time we remake the world. Accompanied by gallons of absinthe and cussing, I'll leave you to imagine the result. So, if I understand rightly, Monsieur de Richer, you've come out here to join your mother. For what reason, exactly? Like you, Mr. President, I'm here as a result of Lord Mortimer's invitation. Two members of the same family here. That is rare. You know what they say. You can pick your nose, but you can't pick your family. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, though, I know your mother well. Stay behind with me afterwards, and we'll take a moment to speak about her. Good Lord, Washington is wearing the emblem of the Grand Master of the Golden Order. It's the highest distinction of the Order in the United States. It puts him on par with my mother. He must really know his stuff when it comes to the occult. Good evening.
evening, my friends. Holy shit. That's the man for my vision. An urgent case has delayed our host, Lord Mortimer. He can't be present this evening, and he sends his deepest apology. He's asked me here, and he hasn't even turned up? Great start. Do you know that man? Sir Gregory Holm, an English aristocrat. Very influential. He's also close to Lord Mortimer. So don't be surprised if he acts like he's at home. And now, my dear guests, a light meal is served in the small salon. For those who would like to, you're invited to follow me into the next room. My dear fellow, you must have read my thoughts. I shall follow. We'll have to be careful not to make too much noise. One of Lord Mortimer's guests is relaxing. Oh, we shall be quiet. Don't take it the wrong way, Sir Holm, but I have already eaten. Thus, I shall be happy to remain by the fireside. If you don't mind, Gregory, I should like to keep Mr. Washington company. Please feel at home. And you, sir? If I stay with Washington, we'll be able to speak about my mother. But on the other hand, I'd like to learn more about this home. I saw him in my vision. My vision is more important. Let's follow home. I'll follow you, sir. Mr. Washington, I hope to speak with you at greater length on another occasion. Emily, please excuse me, but I would like to speak to Sir Holm. I shall see you later. My friend, I hope our dear Giovanni is well. Ah, the troubles in France have fatigued him, but he will recover slowly. Do not fear. He apologizes for remaining in Rome. The voyage was too much for him. And right he was too. The mildness of the Mediterranean, eh? Come, sit down and have something to eat, my friend. You look rather pale. Excuse me, sir. I have been neglecting my duty. I haven't introduced myself. Sir Gregory Holm, an old friend of Lord Mortimer's. A real pleasure, sir. You who must be well used to the court of France. How do you find this peaceful little haven? Charming, if I hadn't come here for disturbing reasons. Yes, I heard the news. What a story. Indeed. I wanted to ask you. Would you have any information about the disappearance of my mother? Ah, uh, very little, I'm afraid, my young friend. Your mother came at the invitation of Lord Mortimer. Then, one fine day, we couldn't find her anywhere. That's it? As I said, I don't know very much. Lord Mortimer had the entire area searched immediately. We found no clue as to her disappearance. But I am convinced that as soon as Lord Mortimer becomes available, he will explain the situation. Thank you for your answers, Sir Holm. But I beg your pardon. I get the impression I know you. Have we met? Except in my dreams, of course. Not that I remember, young man. Uh, perhaps you are mistaking me for another member of the Chamber of Lords. Well, what with the wig and the powder, it wouldn't be the first time. No. You were definitely the one I saw threatening my mother. I thought... never mind. It'll come back to me. Would you allow me one last question, sir? I don't want to take up all your time. Uh, please, go ahead. Um, what do you want to know? Sir... Do you know Emily Hillsborough? Oh, Madame la Duchesse. Of course. It was I who invited her to the island. Do you know of any link between her and my mother? Not really, no. They may well have met at the court of King George, but I can't be sure about that. No dispute between them, then? Not to my knowledge, no. And even if Duchess Hillsborough is a complex woman to understand, I honestly can't imagine her in a conflict with the famous Sara de Ricci. insisted that you rest in your room. Do you want me to call someone? Let me handle this. I'm used to this kind of thing. Miss, can, can you hear me? Leave me. No. 
It's just a dizzy spell. Don't worry. You'll be all right. Her heart rate is already becoming more stable. Wow. Poor girl's had her hands tattooed. I've seen these pinnacles before in old occult books from the end of the 12th century. I don't know what that young woman's trying to protect herself from, but she definitely takes it seriously. I'm so sorry. I... Can you tell me something about her? Who is this young lady? Elizabeth Adams. She's come to the island for a course of treatment, to rest. For a course of treatment? That's right. The seer can do wonders. Are you all right, Elizabeth? Do you feel any better? When did she arrive? Uh, four days ago. Okay. My mother had already gone missing. Are you all right, Elizabeth? You gave us quite a fright. Take it easy, miss. Let me... I just need to get back to my room. Of course, my dear. Go ahead. You saw it, didn't you? Pardon me? He sang it de la bestia. Sorry, your eminence. I don't speak Italian. Ah, forget it. It doesn't matter. Gentlemen, it's getting late. It is time for everyone to go to bed. It has been a long day. It's all the more delicate. I'll see what I can do, but the case I'm on at the moment might well leave me with very few opportunities. Well, I am impressed with all this splendor. But don't spend too much time with Mr. Washington, my dear, or you'll lose your pretty accent. <laughs> <laughs> you seem to be intrigued by that statue. Absolutely. It is remarkable. Lord Mortimer is fond of atypical works of art. I won't disguise the fact that I find it all a little megalomaniacal. But I must say, he does have some outstanding pieces. Sir Holm, who was that young lady with you? Elizabeth Adams, Mr. President. She would have liked to have stayed with us, but the poor thing is exhausted. Elizabeth Adams? Miss Adams is here to rest. You have perhaps already come across her in the corridors. She arrived a few days ago. I perceived her, but we weren't introduced. Rest assured, she is not here for the same reasons as yourselves. Consequently, I'm counting on your indulgence. On that note, it's very late. You must be exhausted. The servant will accompany you to your room. Ladies, gentlemen, I bid you all good night. Mr. President, your eminence, Duchess, you have the same rooms as usual. You, Monsieur de Richet, will find your room at the end of the corridor. Well, my friends, I am bone tired. I am off to my bed. See you in the morning. Good night, sir. I shall do likewise. Louis, I shall see you in the morning. Sleep well. Good night. We'll see you tomorrow. Oh, man. It's been quite a day. Right. Where is my room? Duke Manuel Godoy. That's me. Oh, it's high time I hit the hay. Wow, nice room. 
Mortimer sure doesn't do things halfway. St. Francis of Assisi in ecstasy, before superior voices. It always amuses me to see how art gets used for propaganda purposes. Saturn devouring his son. Again? I saw the same theme in the hall. I wouldn't like to be his son. St. Jerome and the Angel. Yet again, art with political undertones with an image of a saint hearing voices. Judith beheading Holofernes. Ironic in a way, when you know that the artist represented herself as Judith beheading her mentor, who had raped her. St. Francis of Assisi in ecstasy, before superior voices. It always amuses me to see how art gets used for propaganda purposes. Your turn? The servants are not very efficient. Durache can't be far away. They'll find her soon. Their search time is restricted given that they must keep an eye on Adams. I can take care of her, you know. Yes. Well, in any case, I do thank you for bringing her to the island. From what I've understood, the search of Durache's room hasn't turned up any results. Not yet, no. But we've put her son in there. Perhaps he'll find something. Hmm. 
That might come in handy. Louis grows impatient at not yet having met the famous Lord Mortimer. He will meet him tomorrow. Oh, what a pity to lose a knight at the start of the game. Are you waiting for someone? A young French soldier. During our game of chess? Don't worry, Gregory. The game won't disappear. I'll have one of my men escort you back. Don't trouble yourself. I know my way out. Ah, good evening, gentlemen. Please forgive me for this late hour. It is never too late. And we have much to discuss. One last move? Don't worry. Our games always seem to end like this. Or always start like this. Come, come. Take a seat, my friend. A little nighttime stroll, Mr. President. There's nothing like it for a good night's sleep. Do not hesitate to ask a servant to show you back. The corridors seem quite safe. Peppermint, lime flower, and valerian. My miracle remedy when one can't get to sleep. A very good night to you, Mr. President. Thank you. And to you too, sir. I'm coming. Excuse me, am I bothering you? No, not in the least. Is something wrong? I'm going to need your help. Do you remember the young lady we spoke of in the hall? I, I bumped into her in the small salon before. Well, she is the daughter of my friend, the Vice President, John Adams. But she is supposed to be dead. Yeah, that's bizarre. Fair enough. Good heavens! I was present at her funeral. It is disturbing indeed. Yes. I need to make sure it's her. That's where you come in. I want you to distract Elizabeth while I search her room, and perhaps get my hands on some important information. At least, I hope so. Elizabeth is in the small salon. If you hurry, you can still catch her. I just need 10 minutes. But if my vision is true, there are two men nearby discussing very important issues, and one of them looks much like Mortimer. Washington is very kind, but I came to this island for my mother, not for his ghost stories. Count on me, sir. Thank you, my friend. Keep Elizabeth downstairs as long as possible. She must not return to her room. Trust me. According to Washington, Lady Adams is in the small salon. I better hurry.
Uh, my son. Oh, you are a godsend. What's the matter, Your Eminence? I believe a Miss Adams may be in danger. What do you mean? Do you hear that? She is being manhandled in this small salon. By whom? I don't know exactly. Uh, a thug, a Frenchman, it seems. By the cut of his cloth, I'd say he's a member of the French revolutionary government. You should do something, my son. Shit. I was supposed to make sure Adams wouldn't go back to her room. Don't worry, Your Eminence. I'll take care of it. Probably nothing to worry about. Do you want me to call for help? Please don't do anything. I'm sure with a little goodwill, everything will work out fine. Don't go and wake up the whole manor, please. <sighs> Thank you, my son. May God watch over you. <laughs> Who do you think you are? Forget Me, sir. If we were in France, I'd have sent you to the guillotine for what you just said. Please, just let me go back to my room. Hey, you! Stay out of it! This is none of your business. I'm gonna teach this little slut how to behave. What the hell is going on? Huh? I don't think you know who I am. Stop. I beg you. I, I didn't mean to. Don't hit me, please, sir. Shit. Uh. If I step in, Adams might just run back uh -uh. to her room. And if I do nothing, yes, Washington will have enough time to search, but this girl's gonna suffer. Damn it, what should I do? Let her go, huh? Stay out of it, boy. Shit. What are you playing at? I told you to mind your own business, boy. If you think you can side with this whore and then just walk away, you're out of your mind. Give me one good reason not to knock you down. You're not back in your slum now. You're in Lord Mortimer's home. I suggest you think carefully about what you're going to do. Don't think you're getting away with it that easily. I'm sick of all these toffs. If we were in Paris, I'd send you all to the guillotine. And on top of it all, a woman telling me how I ought to behave? I won't stand for it. Oh, okay, okay, wait a minute. What? Don't tell me you're gonna defend these harlots. I believe in man. From speech comes dialogue. From dialogue, peace is born. And from peace, great destinies flourish. What the fuck are you talking about? I get the feeling you're trying to put one over on me. If that's the case, you're making a big mistake. Sorry about that. Look, there's no point in us aggravating each other. Let's both just go our separate ways. Don't move. We're not done yet. You wanted to be the knight in shining armor and save the damsel in distress. Let's see how brave you are. Think about it. You know your head will roll tomorrow if you shoot. Wanna bet? Sure do. I'm not in the habit of beating Lord Mortimer's guest in his own salon. You got off easy this time, but don't try it again. The brooch Elizabeth was wearing. Huh. She was so frightened, she was unaware that she'd lost it. Yeah, well, it didn't seem to do her much good. Well, did you get time to search the room? Louis, I only needed ten minutes. Imagine the scandal if she had found me. What would you have done in my shoes? She was in the middle of an argument with some angry guy. Ten minutes. I didn't ask for the moon. Nonetheless, you found what you were looking for, didn't you? Not everything, but yes. Elizabeth is definitely the daughter of John Adams. 
We need more information. You can always go back. It's too late now. Your Eminence, what are you doing here? I was worried about you, my son. Uh, how did it go with Miss Adams? Don't worry about that anymore, Your Eminence. I had to step in, but everything's under control. <laughs> what an adventure, my son. <laughs> I am relieved to hear it. You acted as a good Christian. In these troubled times, we need more men of your caliber. It's nothing, Your Eminence. I did what I had to do. Well, you did the opposite. Good. Well, thanks for the news. Have a good night. <sighs> I'm exhausted. Better go to bed. I'll search my room tomorrow. If Mother stayed here right before me, you never know. And Mortimer had better show up. Right. In my vision yesterday, I saw that Mother had this room before me. I better search the room. Who knows? Maybe she left me something behind. Torture of Ixion, condemned by the gods to lose his mind because of his arrogance. Devil's Thorn, I'll keep it. Here's something will undermine my botanist appreciation for the local climate.
golden elixir. Inferno by Dante. Abandon hope, all ye who enter here. Lovely lectures Mortimer is giving to his guests. Very jolly. Look, markings on the floor. Eh, just a bit worn out. I was hoping to find something leading to a secret passage. Oh, this bookcase is well stocked. Oh, this book has been put back the wrong way round. A Voyage Around the World, the travel log of the explorer, Louis-Antoine de Bougainville. One of Mother's favorite books. What a coincidence. And I don't believe in coincidences. It's just too much. I don't know what's going on here, but if you felt threatened, I'll bet you'd leave a clue, wouldn't you, Mother? Found it. A faint sign of the order, barely visible. Mother, you undoubtedly must have hidden a clue in this book. Let's see if I can find anything else in this room. Oh, I'm not far from solving the puzzle. I must keep searching. Look, markings on the floor. Eh, just a bit worn out. I was hoping to find something leading to a secret passage. Inferno by Dante. Abandon hope, all ye who enter here. Lovely lectures Mortimer is giving to his guests. Very jolly. Hmm, nothing here. I wouldn't mind a nice, strong coffee, though. Saint Jerome and the Angel. Yet again, art with political undertones with an image of a saint hearing voices. There's a circle around the lock here. There's a note. Effects of Sœur de Richer to be given to her son, Louis. I should probably take it. All right, I've retrieved everything. The incredulity of St. Thomas. Why is Caravaggio representing St. Thomas putting his finger in the wound? Thomas looks on, but doesn't touch. Writing material. Hmm. Let's recap. My mother was in this room. I found a rare edition of her favorite book. She must have left something behind. She must have used the writing materials. What if she used lemon juice instead? An old trick used to hide messages. A message using invisible ink. I bet she used a lemon to leave a message. Now, how do I reveal the message? The message is illegible. I have to keep searching.
That wasn't it. Not to mention I covered half the page with lemon juice. Great. Louis, Louis. Lemon's used to write secret messages, not to reveal them. I'll have to try something else. Well, so it wasn't that, and I've just stained half the page. Ink is always used to write a message, never to reveal one. I must find something else. Let's see what my mother wrote. Where all eyes size you up, you must pass by the Gorgon. Gorgon was the name of Medusa in Greek mythology. On the other hand, where all eyes size you up, I don't get it. And judging by the number of paintings in the manor, it could be anywhere. Damn! The message continues, but thanks to me, the rest of the text is unreadable. Great. I hope it wasn't a unique addition or mother's gonna kill me. Now I better hurry and find that damn Medusa. Sir, dinner is served in the Red Salon. Typical. I'm not hungry. Please give my apologies to all the guests. Uh, Sir Holm requests your presence, sir. Well, I guess I'm just gonna have to wait before going and looking for my Medusa. Tell him I'll be there in a minute. If I get a chance, I may have to take a little tour through the rooms of the other guests. It might be better to take a different stairway. That must be the door to the room of the soldier I saw in my vision. Excuse me, Monsieur de Richet. I really need to talk to you. Is this about last night? No, that was just a misunderstanding. I'm sure it was a little bit my fault, too. There's no excuse for that man's horrible behavior. You ought to tell Sir Holm. Look, the only thing that I care about is that I've lost something precious. I'm not worried about Jack Peru. You didn't happen to lose this, did you? Where did you find it? In the small salon. It's the only reminder I have of my beloved sister. I thought that swine stole it from me. You're her son. Sarah de Richet's son. Yes, why? Last night, I found out that your mother was on the island. What are you doing here? Excuse me, but speaking frankly, why would you care? I know your mother very well. Really? Yes. I have been in your mother's care ever since I was born. She nursed you? Oh, I wouldn't say nursed. No. I remember her stare, cold as ice. Her sadistic hands pressing over my mouth to silence me while I screamed in pain. I remember her knees, too. She held me down with them while she cut and burned scars into me. Hold on a minute. What do you mean? 
You can ask her when you see her. Huh, she's getting more and more agitated. Look, I've... I've gotta go. Wait. I, I need to know more about you and my mother. Why did she put you through all of that? There must be some reason for what she did. What's the point of rubbing salt in the wounds? I want to find out what really happened. No, you really don't want to know what your mother did when I shed my first blood at puberty. On the contrary, you can tell me anything. Let me be my own judge. I know your little game. You're no different from the rest of them. You couldn't give a damn about me. The only thing you're interested in is finding out about your mother. Don't say that. Not, not everyone wants to use you. Some people care about you, don't they? Take your father. I'm sure he tried everything to save you. Sure, he tried everything. To keep me from upsetting his political affairs. Once I was declared insane, I was nothing but a burden that got in the way of his career. By leaving me with your mother, he made all the horrors possible. Don't you have a brother? I have three, but not one of them has bothered to help me. Charles and Thomas were kept away from me to make sure I wouldn't upset them. As for John, the only time he visited me was to make me swear to never publicly compromise his career. Sorry, I... I didn't know. You're an only son, right? Does it show? If you had a brother or sister, you'd know the way blood ties are unbreakable. Except in my family, unfortunately. I've got nothing more to say to you. Figure it out yourself. What can I do for you, sir? I am at your service, day and night, sir. As I was unable to bring my personal effects with me, I was wondering if you could find me a few items. Of course, sir. What would you require? A little Carmelite water would do me a lot of good. Could you find me some, please? Oh, the tonics are under lock and key, sir. Lord Mortimer only allows access to them in cases of emergency. You wouldn't have a little golden elixir I could use, would you? Oh, unfortunately, sir, I have orders not to give any of that medicine to any of Lord Mortimer's guests. Some guests are here to follow a very strict treatment. Mixing or combining certain substances would be dangerous for sir. My good fellow, would you have any amber? available? I would, but unfortunately I don't think I am authorized to give it out, sir. I believe it is a precious stone. Ah, oh, I still haven't quite recovered after that boat crossing. Would you happen to have any Devil's Thorn by any chance? I, I am sorry, sir, but the Devil's Thorn may be just a plant, but it is also a powerful psychotropic drug that causes undesirable diuretic effects. I would advise against, sir, taking any. What's that book you're hiding in your jacket? 
The Sorrows of Young Werther by Goethe, sir, and I am not hiding it. Hand it to me, please. It is damaged, sir. I would never dare lend, sir, a book in such a pitiful state, sir. I took it to restore. I would like to speak about your master, Lord Mortimer. Do please excuse me, sir, but I shall make no comment about my master. Is there anything else that sir would like to know? What can you tell me about the guests? Do excuse me, sir, but I am bound by discretion to say nothing about Lord Mortimer's guests, sir. Perhaps sir would like to know something else? Yes. Can you briefly describe the ground floor, please? Very well, sir. On the ground floor, there are mainly living rooms. Sir finds himself at present in the Grand Hall. From the Grand Hall, Sir can access, on one side, the small salon where the guests like to relax with a good book. From there, Sir can access the conference room, which is closed at present for preparations. That is where Lord Mortimer likes to gather all of his guests for talks. From the other side of the Grand Hall, Sir may access the dining room. That is where Sir's meals will be served. From the dining room, Sir may benefit from an exceptional view overlooking the island. It is also the best way to access the portrait gallery, where a large part of Lord Mortimer's works are exhibited. And in the gallery, Sir will also find access to the garden. But Sir may be reassured, the building is accessible on both sides, so that it surrounds the garden in question. So, Sir should not find cause to worry. No one has ever gotten lost. Yeah, except for my mother. Has Sir another question? What's on the first floor? The first floor is reserved for guests, Sir. That is where Sir will find his private rooms. The main corridor leads around the building. Three stairways will enable Sir to return to the ground floor. It is also from there that Sir will be able to reach the second floor. Thank you very much. Anything else, Sir? Yes. What can I find on the second floor? That floor is strictly reserved for Lord Mortimer, Sir. In the west wing, on the second floor, are his private chambers. In the east wing, are the rooms reserved for Lord Mortimer's personal guests. At the moment, these rooms are reserved for Sir Holm, sir. But only authorized guests may access that area. Does sir have any more questions? What is outside on the island, exactly? Lord Mortimer has made a point of keeping the main part of the island in its natural state, sir. For security reasons, only the wharves and the gardens are accessible to guests. If sir would like to walk along the wharves, he has only to follow the pathway used upon his arrival. If he would like to walk in the interior gardens of the manor, I would advise sir to pass through the portrait gallery. May I help sir in any other way? friends, I bid you welcome. I hope the night was not too short. Your Eminence, Duchess, Monsieur de Richet, allow me to introduce our new guests. They arrived during the night. Johann Christoph von Wollner, Minister of Religious Affairs and close aide of Frederick William II, King of Prussia. Napoleon Bonaparte, Lieutenant of the French Revolutionary Army. 
and Jacques Peru, French Revolutionary Tribunal Judge. Unfortunately, my friends, Lord Mortimer will not be joining us this morning, but he should be with us later. So, let us begin. What is Mortimer playing at? He tells me to come urgently and he sends no one to meet me? <laughs> Thank you again for the wine, your Empress. It is served every day at the King's table. I am delighted to hear it. Volner and Piaggi uh, seem to be getting along well. So what do you want to know? Uh, and you, sir? Surprising when you know Volner prohibited religious practices in Prussia. Renowned member of the Rose Qua Order, former Freemason and great lover of alchemy. And look at Piaggi fawning over him. I really do have a problem digesting political protocol. My dear Johan, how are you? Glad to make landfall at last. And yourself? Very well. And your husband? He's poorly. The French Revolution gives him terrible headaches. Oh, I understand. I shall feel better too, as soon as the situation is settled. If by chance the French crisis is emulated in Berlin, there will always be a refuge for you in London, my dear. Your offer does you honor, Emily. But London is much closer to Paris than Berlin. Beware. The French are capable of sailing up the Thames straight to the Houses of Parliament. Oh, my friend, I am shaking in my clogs. <laughs> Is the wine to your liking? Very much so, Sir Gregory. Such complexity. Typically French. A Souterne, isn't it? Absolutely. <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, this is not Lord Mortimer's favorite wine. It is yours. In his absence, I have taken the liberty of making a slight deviation from the rule. But I count on your discretion. <laughs> Don't worry. I appreciate the same grape varieties as you. I remember the last time we tasted that nectar here at this table. The finest minds of the century were present. And the last time we drank it, the orphanage in Bloomsbury was still in ruins. Would... would you repeat that? Oh, well, uh, I put some small effort into the works. The orphanage reopened just before Christmas. Mm. The bedrooms, <laughs> washrooms, and the classrooms had all been refurbished. I... I don't know what to say. You have given the girls a wonderful Christmas gift. Thank mm -hmm. you. I made a promise. Now it is done. Is everything all right? Yes, thank you. <laughs> I had a moment of absence, but here I am again. Thank you, Jimmy What do you think of Volner? The Prussian king is his puppet. I find it hard to believe. The king of Prussia is so weak. Be careful. Volner is as influential as he is dangerous. You seem to know each other well. We used to work together. I see. Have you any information on this Napoleon? <laughs> What do you think, madam? What is this Bonaparte doing here? The presence of a soldier is never a good sign. It can only mean there's going to be further war. To answer your question, I only know that his family were in favor of the revolution, <laughs> and that it almost cost them their lives. Thank you, that's helpful. Monsieur de Richet? It would seem we have common interests. Mm. <laughs> Could we speak in private, please? Surely not. Lord Mortimer and the Golden Order, through your mother, have concluded a financial agreement. Stay composed, Louis. I'm listening. An agreement for cannons. Mm. Lord Mortimer assured me that you are to take over the project on behalf of your mother. <laughs> you must know that I am deeply sorry about our disappearance, but I must validate the deal urgently if I want to be able to organize things properly. I haven't seen Lord Mortimer yet. I'm afraid I'll be unable to answer your questions. He assured me that you could replace your mother during her absence. I appreciate his confidence, but still, this is a bit hasty. 
but please continue. Of course, but I need to know if I can count you among my allies. Well, of course. And for that, I have a little question for you. The agreement stipulates an aid of 50,000 louis d'or for 200 cannon. Absolutely. 50,000 louis d'or in hard cash. The offer I'm talking about was for only 20,000 louis d'or, Monsieur de Richet. The truth is, you really have no idea about our agreement. So, you're wasting my time. I need to work with people I can have confidence in, sir. The exact numbers may have escaped me. I suggest you wait for my mother's return in order to manage such details. I have one last question I would like to pose to you. We don't know each other yet, you and I. And I need to make sure that we both share the same vision for the future of France. Given the hard times that have befallen our beautiful country, what do you think it would take to restore its uh, luster? Let the people make their own choices. You are joking, I hope. The people are simply not capable of taking charge, don't you see? They are an uneducated mob who react on the spur of the moment, incapable of providing a coherent vision for the good of the country. <laughs> I think there must be a misunderstanding. What do you mean? I cannot believe that Lord Mortimer advised me to speak to you. I must have misunderstood. Excuse me, please. <sighs> Bravo, Louis. Total fiasco. My friends, I would like to say a few words, please. I would like to thank Lord Mortimer and you, Sir Holm, for bringing us all together here. Those of us for whom it is not the first time here, like me, are all trembling in sweet anticipation of the arrival of our host. For the rest, I would like to reassure you that Lord Mortimer always has a few surprising projects to propose. <laughs> but I can assure you that each and every one of us has always benefited from them. <laughs> the last time I came to this place, Lord Mortimer offered to help me in my electoral campaign for the presidency of the United States. And it is imminently clear that his support was an invaluable aid to us. We are here among like-minded people. So let us put aside the conflicts in which some of our nations find themselves at present. So I raise my glass in honor of you all, my new and old friends. I trust you shall not be disappointed, Mr. Washington. Right, we shall meet again tomorrow. All the guests will be present, as well as Lord Mortimer, I hope. Until then, I trust you will find plenty to keep you amused. recap. Before dinner, I was going to investigate my mother's message. I've got to find the place where all eyes size you up.
Discourse on the Method by Descartes. This book changed the way I looked at the world. Circe turning Ulysses' companions back into humans. Ulysses and Circe at the table. If I were you, Ulysses, I wouldn't drink the wine. The Conversion of Ulysses by Gours. Circe changing Ulysses' companions into swines. Wine in a salon. That's an odd choice of decor. Well, Your Eminence, do you still have any room left? Ah, my son, the sin of gluttony is the most difficult of all in my eyes. Nevertheless, what a charming moment we have had together. I'm delighted I was able to talk to Mr. Von Wollner. We hadn't spoken to each other for an eternity. Yes, I noticed that your eminence knew a fair number of people at the table. The benefit of age, my son. This isn't my first invitation to Lord Mortimer's. You will see, it's the perfect place to make new friends. Indeed, I noticed that you and Mr. Bonaparte had already begun. Ah, I adapt quickly to local customs. It's what I was taught. <laughs> and you are right to do so, my son. But tell me, have you had any news of your mother since your arrival? <sighs> Alas, still nothing, your minutes. But I still haven't been able to meet Lord Mortimer. Do not worry. It is typical of him. What can I say? Lord Mortimer is a very busy man. I should think you are beginning to worry. To tell you the truth, not really. You are right. Be positive. Perhaps Sarah is in the company of Lord Mortimer, and they will both turn up shortly. <laughs> but while I have you with me, I, I have a question for you. Well, go ahead, Louis. What can I do for you? If I said to you, where all eyes size you up, would it mean anything to you? Mm. I don't know if it's the place you're looking for, Louis. Mm. But it makes me think of the portrait gallery. There's a gallery here? Can you tell me where to find it, please? Of course. Just go through the door at the end. It will lead into the library. Continue all the way through, and you'll end up in the gallery. You'll see it, Louis. When you get there, you'll know. Thank you very much, Your Eminence. On that last word, then I shall leave you to fight your demons. See you later, Your Eminence. See you later, my son. Amber crystals. Atreus, the Miller brothers. Mother expressly forbade me from reading it. size you up. Chances are, that's the room my mother spoke of. And she also spoke of a Medusa. Should I go and try to find the creature now? Liberty or Death by Regnaud. Well, I'll take Liberty, please. Ah, a painting by Angle. 
Moliere dining with Louis XIV. The king's posture is surprising. It's almost as if he's addressing someone in the assembly. Allegory regarding the decoration of the rights of men. That's the least you could say. Celia, that name means nothing to me. Christ Crucified by Velasquez. Look, someone's left a note there. Reserved for the Duke of Alquidia. The Last Supper by Leonardo da Vinci. The last day before his crucifixion, Jesus announces that he will be betrayed by one of his disciples. François Premier, Receiving the Holy Family, a painting by Raphael. The Song of Roland. Roland feeleth his death is near, his brain is oozing by either ear. With his brain oozing, it's already remarkable that he can feel anything. The Fall of Phaeton, another painting by Rubens. Poor Phaeton, struck by lightning for borrowing his father's chariot and losing it to the company by Rembrandt. Fragment of Amber. A meeting between Louis XIV and Philippe V. I wonder why Mortimer is particularly fond of this painting. find out what mother was trying to do with her. The Medusa. A hero armed with a sword. Hmm. A hero with a lantern. And the last one holding a shield. I'll stake my life on it. All the statues form a single scene together. The poor devils are about to face the beast. Let's give them a helping hand. Origin of myths, a reinterpretation of legendary creatures. Just what I need. The text is in French on the left hand page and in Latin on the right hand. Let's find the chapter on the Medusa. Hang on. This version is significantly different from the regular one. It recounts how men have always belittled women in society. Harpies, mermaids, the chimera, the hydra, the gorgons. Ah! The section on the Medusa. 
While some of the heroes divert attention from the Gorgon, the hero with the sword brandishes his weapon at the Medusa. For Pete's sake, Emily! You scared the pants off me. Don't ever do that again. Well, keep your nose out of my business, then. I don't know what you're talking about. Stop fooling around and tell me what you're doing here. I've discovered a hidden message from my mother. She explains how to find the secret room. Something must have attracted her here, so I've come to check it out. And you? What brings you here? My, you're curious. Let me guess. Go on then, impress me. You're looking for somebody. Your silence speaks volumes. I must have got it right, and you will go to great lengths to find them. So, this person means a lot to you. Well, no matter. I'll tolerate your presence this one time. Now, since you're here, make yourself useful. Look around on your side. I'll do the same on mine. And if you find anything of interest, let me know. Oh yeah, in your dreams. At your service, madam. Golden Fleece. It's freezing. Hurry up. Cold? You want a rug? It'll warm you up. I wouldn't be caught dead in that horrible thing. <laughs> That's a pity. The gold color brings out your eyes. And your flattery brings out your boorishness. An unofficial gospel? You'd be more likely to find this kind of book at the Vatican. Nothing special. The library at Buckingham has three.
How did the English manage to get their hands on them? When someone wants to attract the attention of the world's leading power, somehow the gifts just pour in. You wouldn't have gone to the Vatican recently, would you? Are you calling me a thief? Certainly not. Never entered my mind. Hey, Mortimer is the author of this work. He talks about his passion for art. Guess what I found? The Holy Grail. Older than that. A piece of Noah's Ark. Not that old. This could go on for hours. Just tell me. Caesar's laurel wreath. Stop. Don't put your grubby fat fingers on you it. Find my fingers fat? <laughs> At least put on some gloves. Please note, my fingers are slim. You were going to leave marks. My god, what an amateur. Many a harpsichord player would love to have sexy fingers like mine. Tell me where you took your infiltration classes so I can have your tutor executed. Let's compare hands then. We'll soon see whose fingers are fattest. <laughs> no, I'm not going to compare hands with you. Let's just keep going. Bad loser. You should see this sword, Emily. It's magnificent. I'm busy. Describe it to me. I think this is Excalibur, King Arthur's sword. I've always dreamt of drawing it from the stone. How sweet. You're still clinging to your boyhood dreams. When you finished playing, maybe you can help me search the place? Well, looks like a pamphlet on different political regimes, written by Mortimer himself. Amber. Here's something interesting. A manor in Maine, hundreds of acres of land in Catalonia, properties in Shanghai. Incredible. Some of these deeds are over 600 years old, and all signed by the hand of Mortimer. I wonder if that's what inspired my mother's attention. How come all these documents have Mortimer's signature on them? Do you think all these properties really belong to him? These documents must be fakes. No man can own that many original works, no matter how rich he is. Be careful. The Order has tried many times to estimate his personal wealth without ever succeeding. And look here. Castles in Scotland, vineyards in Italy, districts in Venice. He's richer than some European countries. These documents are intriguing, but do you really think that's what attracted your mother's attention here? I don't know. She was obsessed with Mortimer, and I must confess, these property deeds are troubling. If that's the case, why would she have left them? Once again, I don't know. We'll have to ask her when we find her. And what's your take? How did Lord Mortimer get all this? It's just crazy. Secret connections, money, or a well-kept family treasure passed on from generation to generation. Who knows? That would mean some of Mortimer's ancestors lived before Jesus was born. I wonder why my mother didn't make it clear what she was interested in here. She didn't have time to write it down, or maybe she wasn't sure of what she was looking for. Or she wanted to protect her discoveries. It's disturbing. You'll just have to search the rest of the room. Maybe you'll find something. Carry on searching. What is that you found? A cameo pendant. What's going on? 
Nothing. For crying out loud, Emily, you lunged for that jewel like your life depended on it. Tell me what this is about. No. We just met, Louis. I like you, but I can't just suddenly open myself up like a book to you. Listen, Emily. It seems pretty obvious to me that you haven't come here for the sole purpose of sampling Mortimer's cellar. Stop all the clever evasions and just trust me. And why the hell should I place my trust in you, Louis? Mortimer's letter, my mother's message in the book, the golden order. What more do you need as proof of my goodwill? I freely admit that my wary side does get the better of me sometimes. Wary? Yeah, like a wild animal. Don't exaggerate. But that's what I like about you. I'll admit you are fairly reliable. That's it? I was expecting more. Well, I'm prepared to trust you when it comes to choosing a French cheese. But I've nothing to gain by confiding in you any further than that. Nothing to gain? Damn it, Emily! I'm only trying to help you. Stop needing to gain something all the time. Because you think I need help? Just like everyone. You have your strengths and your weaknesses. And there's no use pretending otherwise. Ha! And I bet you found out where I'm weak, haven't you? Honestly, you don't seem to know all that much about the occult. I don't blame you. Not everyone can have bathed in it since childhood. But that's the point. You'd be doing yourself a favor if you trusted me. I'm sure I can be of more use to you than you think. I am a highly skilled member of the Order and in the service of the Queen. Do you really believe I'm a novice when it comes to the occult? My dear Louis, sorry to be blunt, but you don't know what you're talking about. I might have some weaknesses, but I don't need your help to overcome them. And I'm simply not contemplating collaborating with anyone at this time. Do you understand? Well, one thing is very clear. You're working for someone. You're the dark hand of someone more powerful. Home, for example. You seem to know each other very well. Why are we bringing home to the conversation? If you knew me better, you would know that I take orders from no one. I already have a work partner. I know my weaknesses. I don't doubt that your abilities will be of use to me. But I already have all that, thanks to my teammate. Is there any chance you might tell me who he is? Mm, no, I've already said too much. Consider yourself lucky I've even given you this much. It's extremely rare, believe me. Come on, don't stop now that you've come this far. You know that eventually I'll end up making you talk. Well, since no one can resist you, let's see if you can guess who my partner is. You're a gambler. So, your partner is... It's as obvious as it is surprising. You're my mother's hard-hitting partner. Oh, God, do you really believe the nonsense that comes out of your mouth? Well, a second ago I did, a little. Sorry, Louis, your mother is not my partner. sister. She's your partner. She's the one you're looking for. Well, I am impressed. How the devil did you guess I had a sister? Virtually no one even knows. When it comes to getting results, you are very good. I grant you that. You deserve to know why the sight of the cameo pendant affected me so strongly. I thought it belonged to Emma, my twin sister. Oh. Now I get why you said you had a memory for two. Yes. You can't imagine to what extent, though. As children, everyone got us mixed up. So one day, we decided to play along. Since then, we have become one and the same. We have officially erased the identity of my sister Emma. Emily Hillsborough. The woman with two faces. Clever. But isn't it complicated? How do you make it work? One of us has no existence in the outside world. We share everything. First for one. Then for the other, we dress the same, wear the same makeup, we speak the same. 
We've learned to act as one. When we accept a mission, we both turn up. This time, though, she went ahead, and I was meant to wait for her on the mainland. She was meant to meet Sir Holm and bring back the details so we could work out who would follow up. And there was a problem? She was supposed to return from Mortimer's one week ago. The boat turned up at Plymouth, but alas, no trace of my sister. Instead, a sailor passed me a message from Holm, notifying me of her sudden disappearance. So... My mother and your sister go missing just a few days apart. That's strange. Maybe their disappearances are linked. It's clearly a possibility, but up to now I haven't found a trace of either of them. None of this is very reassuring. By the way, Louis, now that you are in on the secret, you are obliged to keep it to yourself. Or you will pay very dearly. Don't worry. Your secret is safe with me. It's time to leave. So, what do you think of our first adventure? I must admit, it has been fun by your side. Same here. Oh, she's been drinking too much again. Louis, I need to talk to you right now. Good evening, Elizabeth. Actually, this is not a good time. I'm begging you, please, don't leave me alone. I'll be waiting for you in your room, but don't be late. I was sure there was a certain je ne sais quoi between us. Louis, we need to talk now, otherwise it'll be too late. Looks like Elizabeth really needs me, but if I start talking to her, for sure Emily won't wait for me. What should I do? Excuse me, Elizabeth, but some very urgent business has cropped up. We can speak tomorrow. No, Louis, don't leave me alone. They've come back. Good night, madam. Well, well, Louis, you took your sweet time. What did our poor Elizabeth want? The truth is, I really don't have the slightest idea, but I thought all of that could wait until tomorrow. That young girl seems very... Emily? Have I misunderstood something here? What are you doing in my room? And for a while now, the question has been nagging at me. And that explains why I now find you here in my bed. Go ahead. Ask me the question that's been burning at your lips. I know your mother was here to meet someone, but I can't figure out who. Oh. So that's what's been hiding behind all this. We are both members of the Order, Louis. Let's try to be honest with each other. I have followed with great interest your affair in Paris, in connection with Mr. Von Borschert. You managed to steal something from him, if I'm not mistaken. Are you talking about the Book of All Mysteries? Al Azif? That's right, Louis. A valuable bit of plunder, isn't it? Yeah. When we finally found it, we took it. And where is the book right now? Amazingly, it's right here. Mother took it with her when she came. This is quite fascinating. But just what did Sarah expect to accomplish here? My mother came here to find out who Von Burchard planned on selling the book to. And did she find out? I have no idea. But I think she thought it would be someone invited to Mortimer's next party. You mean, one of us here now? That's what I think. It wouldn't be you, by any chance. Unfortunately, no. I was planning to steal it myself. Thank you for all this information, Louis. Right, enough chatting. Come and join me instead. to go, Louis. I don't want anyone finding me here in the morning. You're right. Well, have a good night. Good night. See you tomorrow, rested and ready. Sure thing.
Mortimer? Monsieur de Richet. At last we meet. <laughs>